Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today we're going to be talking about thyroid storm. And we're going to talk about what causes thyroid storm, we're going to talk about how it presents, what are the symptoms of thyroid storm, we're going to talk about treatment, we're going to talk about your long-term outcome, um, and so on. So let's, let's jump right in. And the reason I want to talk about this is because I think a lot of patients maybe misunderstand what a thyroid storm actually refers to, and they're perhaps confusing thyroid storm with another condition known as thyrotoxicosis. And so what I want to do is I want to start by explaining the difference between um, these conditions and then also hyperthyroidism. So we'll do that just real quick. So first of all, hyperthyroidism is a, is a list of conditions which lead to a state of excess thyroid hormone in the body. That's all it is. Okay. So that's number one. Number two is thyrotoxicosis. Now thyrotoxicosis refers to the impact that thyroid hormone has on your body, the negative impact that it has, all right? And so that's why it's called toxicosis. So it's thyroid causing a toxic effect on your body. And then lastly is thyroid storm, which is what we're going to be focusing on today. Now, thyroid storm is different than these other things. It is true that hyperthyroidism can lead to thyroid storm, but they're completely separate conditions because thyroid storm is a life-threatening condition, okay? That's why it's a medical emergency. So we only give in medicine, we only give the designation of medical emergency to conditions which may cause death or threaten your life if they're not treated as soon as possible. So medical emergencies, other ones that you might know of include heart attacks, um, strokes, and serious trauma to, to your body. That's the same, the same type of category here. So thyroid storms falls into the category of medical emergency because it represents an immediate threat on your life. And the threat on your life comes from the fact that too much thyroid hormone actually damages your body. Okay, and so um, on, in this way, you can think about it as a manifestation. So if you think about a spectrum of disease in which hyperthyroidism affects your body, on one end you have thyroid toxicosis, and that's just damage. That's a mild amount of damage. You don't feel good when you have it, but it's not going to kill you. And then at some point, as that gets worse and worse and worse, you reach thyroid storm. And that's when things get very serious. So if you're just experiencing some minor things like, and I, these, you know, we're saying minor because they're relative here, but they're, they're serious to you, but some minor heart palpitations or maybe just an elevation, you know, a little bit of diarrhea, um, a little bit of weight loss, those are sort of the more mild symptoms and representation of thyrotoxicosis, whereas the extreme manifestation of, of those would be complete cell death in some of these areas, and that causes some serious symptoms. So right away, just understand that there's a difference between all these things. Okay, well, let's talk about some of the symptoms. So how do you know if you're in a thyroid storm? Well, luckily, it's actually very hard to miss because the symptoms are very serious. It's not like you're going to, you know, just wake up one morning and boom, it's there and you didn't know it was coming all along. That's generally not how it occurs. Although we'll talk about some of the other triggers that can cause it to come up um, when we get uh, down farther a little bit here. But generally, that's not how it happens. So the way that it works is, let's say that you're, you're experiencing some of these symptoms and they're just getting progressively worse and worse and worse and you decide to go to your doctor. So what your doctor would do is they would look at your symptoms and they would give you a point based off the symptoms that you have. And if you reach a certain amount of points, then they would they would compare your lab tests to those and then they would determine if you were in a thyroid storm or not. Now, this is obviously happening very quickly because um, usually when you have a thyroid storm, you present to the emergency department. You're not generally going in just for a you know a routine visit to your doctor. So put that in mind, put that in the context here. So what are the symptoms? So number one and probably the most common symptom is a fever or an elevated body temperature. This is also referred to as thermoregulatory dysfunction. Uh, and what that means, it's a fancy way of saying your body temperature is haywire. So usually hot, and that has to do with the stimulation of thyroid hormone on all the cells in your body. It just cranks them into overdrive. It'd be like just pressing the gas on and the, probably the brake at the same time, and the engine's just running. In this case, it's your body. It's just producing tons and tons and tons of heat, and that heat has to go somewhere. And so it's being released in your body, and that's how your temperature goes up. Another common uh, symptom would be a rapid heart rate, otherwise known as tachycardia. However, this is usually very high. So if you, some people, you know, technically um, tachycardia can be low. There's, there's the, a degree of severity in terms of all of these things. So when we're talking about a rapid heart rate, I'm talking about, you know, 130s, 140s, 150s, 160s, just at rest. That is, that is a very abnormal heart rate if you're just laying in bed. Um, another very serious uh, symptom would be rapid development of heart conditions, including heart failure, heart attack, or atrial fibr fibrillation. And what this refers to is that the thyroid hormone in excessive amounts can simply damage your heart and, and cause some serious problems. Um, another symptom would be swelling 
which is also referred to as edema, especially in the extremities. And this is a serious symptom because it can be a manifestation of your heart not working very well. So if the heart isn't able to pump blood forward, it starts to back up and it will back up all the way down into uh, the veins in your legs, which causes the swelling of edema, especially in the extremities. And that's a very bad sign. People with heart failure often have a lot of that. Um, other symptoms include neurological dysfunction, such as just irritability or agitations, but can go all the way to seizures or coma. And now we, you can start to see these are really serious symptoms. Um, and then lastly, you can also have gastrointestinal issues such as diarrhea, but that can progress all the way to jaundice or liver failure. And so these are, so but just put these into context that a fever, a mild fever is not a big deal, but a very high fever of like 104, 105, and you're not sick with a, you know, bacterial infection, that's a big problem. Okay, that's, that's. That's where um, you have to start thinking about thyroid storm. So what about your labs? The labs are actually pretty easy to identify. They're the same labs that are associated with, um, with uh, the patterns that are found in hyperthyroidism. So you would expect to have a very high free T3 and a very low TSH. Now, generally, the labs can be used to confirm your, the suspicion of the doctor or of yourself. So it's, you know, like I said, you go in, you have these symptoms, they pro pull your blood immediately and they'll run these tests if they think, if that's on like their um, list of diagnoses that they think uh, might be um, causing your issues. And so, you know, you put these into context and they usually go together. But the labs, I would say they're an important part, but your symptoms are just as important in this case because it's hard to miss, like I said, this list of symptoms here. You can't miss it if you're someone, you know, is their neurological dysfunction is altered or, you know, they're potentially, you know, going, having seizures, like it's just hard to miss. Um, so what causes it? So let's talk a minute about the cause. The good news is, well, I guess we'll say good news here, is that the, the majority of the time, a thyroid storm is the result of untreated hyperthyroidism. And that's usually due to Graves' disease. So you're probably familiar with Graves um, as the most common cause of hyperthyroidism, especially in the United States. And which is the autoimmune disease. But usually what happens is we don't really miss Graves' disease, that di the diagnosis that often. In fact, most people with Graves are being treated for that condition. But what if you weren't treated? Or what if you decided to take a more natural approach or to try something different? Well, that is how uh, thyroid storm can potentially start to uh, cascade and develop. Because what happens is it's usually due to an untreated or undertreated form of hyperthyroidism that then just slowly picks up over time and over time. And then suddenly you reach that, that threshold where then you start to develop the symptoms of thyroid storm. That's not the only way that you can get it though. Um, in fact, there are a couple of other ways that happen much quicker or, or they happen um, very, very uh, rapidly, we'll say. So for instance, and this happens if people have hyperthyroidism, but then they also have an acute illness. And so some of these, some of these things that can precipitate or cause thyroid storm rapidly include things like a heart attack, uh, or if you go into DKA, which stands for diabetic ketoacidosis, um, and that's relevant usually only to those who have um, diabetes. You might, it might occur if you become pregnant or if you experience massive trauma. So it's possible if you have hyperthyroidism that's being treated and it's perfectly fine to all of a sudden be kicked up to thyroid storm if you also have some of these other things. So in that way, it is possible for it to happen, you know, very quickly, but that's generally not how it occurs. Usually it's a slow buildup over time um, due to not being treated. So how do you treat it? There's actually a lot of different treatments here. I'm going to talk about some of the, the basic ways and how you should think about this. But first of all, there, there are five B's to, to the treatment. So number one, you want to block synthesis, and that's blocking synthesis of thyroid hormone. So th synthesis is the creation of it. Um, number two, you want to block release. You want to block your thyroid, which is stores the thyroid hormone. You want to block it from producing more. Um, number three, you want to block T4 to T3 conversion, and this is the activation of thyroid hormone. So if you can, you know, so even if your body's releasing it, you might be able to block it from activating it, and then you don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, number four is beta blockers, and these are medications which slow down the impact that thyroid hormone has on your cells, especially in your heart tissue and in the peripheral tissues in your body. And then number five is block gastrointestinal circulation. And what that refers to is the reabsorption of thyroid hormone um, through the GI tract. So what you can do is you can take binders um, such as uh, cholesteramine, which bind up the, the hormones in your body and prevent your body from putting them back into circulation because that's what will happen sometimes in your body with hormones. You will constantly secrete them and reabsorb fractions of them um, you know, in a cycle. So these five ways are kind of how you need to treat um, thyroid storm. And each of these things has a different set of medications that you can use and, and so on. And so I won't go into those in detail because they're not um, really relevant to what we're talking about now. But just realize 
because it's so serious, we treat it at multiple levels. And you might notice that some of these treatments are the same treatments you might be using for hyperthyroidism, um, especially due to Graves or, or otherwise. So the prognosis, like what can you expect if you have this? Um, it's at, Like I said, it's a medical emergency, which means it's a very serious condition, and it has a mortality rate of about 10 to 20 percent. So let me put that into context. What that means is that if uh, 10 people have thyroid storm, one to two of those people may die as a result of that, um, uh, as a result of having that, that disease, thyroid storm. So that's pretty serious. Those are not great odds. So the best thing you can possibly do is to prevent yourself from developing it. And the best way to do that is by preventing it, and that is by making sure that you treat your hyperthyroidism. So I'm all, I'm all for taking natural approaches, um, as you probably know if you've seen my other videos. I'm all for that, and I think that they can be very powerful um, in, in treating thyroid disease. But hyperthyroidism is kind of its own unique beast here. Um, it can be done, but you also want to make sure that you're not neglecting the medications that may be necessary to prevent damage to your body. Okay, so always keep that in the in the back of your mind. The best way to prevent it is to just simply take your medication and keep um, keep your hyperthyroidism in check and the thyroid toxicosis in check. So that's pretty much it. So I, I hope you guys have a better understanding of what thyroid storm is, how it affects the body, um, the symptoms of it, and and so you can be on the lookout for it. Um, but if you have any questions, please leave them below. I'm happy to uh, help answer those questions, especially if you're confused about thyroid toxicosis or thyroid storm and hyperthyroidism and how these things all kind of fit together. So leave your questions below and I'd be happy to get to them. Um, if you've enjoyed this, uh, feel free to like or leave a comment or subscribe to the channel. Um, and otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.